Welcome back to Trinity Bible Study. We have been in Acts chapter 21 and we are watching Paul as he comes into Jerusalem. And as he enters Jerusalem, he is uh, eventually uh, joins up with the elders and the chief elder or the bishop James and he tells them about his journeys and his evangelistic efforts and how the Gentiles are coming to faith in Christ. And of course they rejoice with him and then they break the news and they say, oh, there's a problem here amongst some of the Jews in town right now. And, um, and this is where Paul is asked to kind of, shall we say, look like a Jew for a couple of days and be the Jewish thing so that what they have said he is preaching isn't really real. And so Paul does the customary issues of going to the temple for purification, which the Jews did. And uh, he had no problem doing that because he understood what Judaism portrayed. And he knew what the reality of Jewish faith was. It becomes founded, obviously, in the Messiah. And that was Jesus Christ, who he believed was the Messiah and who we do as Christians today. And so we're going to pick up in verse 25 of Acts 21. But concerning the Gentiles, who have believed, we wrote, having decided that they should abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from that which is strangled, and from fornication. Then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself along with them, went into the temple, giving notice of the completion of the days of purification, until the sacrifice was offered for each one of them. And when the seven days were almost over, the Jews from Asia, these are the ones who didn't like him in and around the diaspora, the Asia, we call it Asia Minor or Turkey, and then of course in Corinth and in Greece too, and Macedonia. Uh, the Jews were from Asia, upon seeing him in the temple, began to stir up the multitude and laid hands on him. This is what they did. This is just exactly what they did. They didn't like Paul's message of Jesus Christ. They wanted to stick to what they knew, and they thought that he was absolutely teaching against Jewish faith. And Paul wasn't. He was completing it in Christ. And that's where they didn't get it. And so they caused him more trouble. Paul, who was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, I mean, he was a well-trained and well-educated Jew. Um, he knew what it was all about, and he understood it. Now he was preaching his conversion and his beliefs in the Jewish arena. And we saw a couple of times in our last few sessions where he gets frustrated with the Jews because they are his worst enemy. And he happens to be more educated in that probably in kind of an odd way than he probably is literally educated in the Christian faith. Although his faith is strong in Christ and he has spent time with Jesus as we have talked about in the past. And so in verse 28, <clears throat> crying out, Men of Israel, these Jews from Asia, cried out, Men of Israel, come to our aid. This is the man who preaches to all men everywhere against our people, and the law, and this place, which is be the temple. And besides, he has even brought Greeks into the temple, and has been defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen triumphants, the Ephesian, in the city with him, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. In other words, they were figuring Paul was bringing Gentiles into the temple arena, and that was not the thing to do. <clears throat> and they were accusing him of that right there. Verse 30, And all the city was aroused, and the people rushed together, and taking hold of Paul, they dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. And while they were seeking to kill him, a report came up to the commander of the Roman cohort, which would be the guards, or the, we call them the policemen, basically, uh, <clears throat> that all Jerusalem was in confusion. And at once he took along some soldiers, this would be the leader of the Roman guard, <clears throat> and once he took along some soldiers and, centur and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the commander and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Obviously, this was a little bit of what we would classically call taking the law into your own hands. And they knew better than that, but they were going to do it until they had to stop. And that's typically the way they operated in those days. The Jews took care of their own business until the Romans stepped in and took over. <clears throat> Verse 33, Then the commander came up and took hold of him and ordered him, 
to be bound and with two chains, and he began asking who he was and what he had done. But among the crowd, some were shouting one thing and some another. And when he could not find out the facts uh, on account of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. And when he got to the stairs, it so happened that he was carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob. In other words, the people really started getting angry as they hauled Paul off to the barracks where they would question him. <clears throat> For the multitude of the people kept following behind, crying out, Away with him! And as Paul was brought to be, or as Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the commander, May I say something to you? And he said, Do you know Greek? Then you are not the Egyptian who some time ago stirred up a revolt and led the 4,000 men of the assassins out into the wilderness. They were basically thinking Paul was somebody else, and he wasn't. Uh, apparently there had been some rebel that had done a lot of damage in Jerusalem and took a bunch of people with him out into the wilderness. <clears throat> Verse 39, And Paul said, I am a Jew of Tarsus, in Cilicia, a citizen of no insignificant city, and I beg you, allow me to speak to the people. And when he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the stairs, motioned to the people with his hand, and, with a, and when there was a great hush, he spoke to them in the Hebrew dialect, saying, and here's where we'll pick up and hear Paul's testimony again and afresh. He's going to take advantage of every opportunity he can to share the story of Jesus Christ and his conversion as a Jew who was against Christianity more than anyone and how he was converted by Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus and we'll see that story as he tells it again and we'll see how he tells it again and why he tells it again to these people. He wants them to know Jesus Christ personally. And that is something that even in the midst of this great persecution and this awesome danger that was in his life, he's willing to stand up and say, look, I want to talk to you about Jesus. Most of us would say, lock me in the jail, keep me, protect me, call my lawyer. Paul says, no, I'm going to preach the gospel. And this is where it gets interesting. We'll pick up there in our next session. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this word that we have. Help us to understand it and help us to be just like Paul, willing to stand up and preach the gospel when we need to. Be with us. Walk with us. Keep your word close to our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen.